Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to Special OAA Now Football Preview Show, the Blue Edition. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger of Around the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells, the podcast, and also the host of Between Terminas on Orient Native Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching us on Orient Native Intelligence and also on YouTube and those hearing us on the local voice on SoundCloud. Last week we talked about the gold division. This week we talked the blue division. Next week we have the white division. And in two weeks we have the red division. So let's look at the, um, this division, of course, last year the blue was won, of course, by um, Bloomfield Hills. Of course, it went undefeated. Now they went up to the white division. Um, so this is going to be a really interesting um, concept here. The divisions have changed this year. This is now a... Um, Six, six, five, five format. So there's five teams in the blue in the newly remade blue division this year. So let's look at our first team, which is the Red Hawks of Troy Athens. This is a team that last year went five and four um, under Coach Billy Keenis, but they made some changes this offseason. Keenis is now at Holly. Enter Coach Tom Cook into the fold, and here is Coach Cook at the podium. Good afternoon. I just want to say thank you to Rochester Athletic Department for hosting this event and inviting us. Um, we've had a great summer. Uh, the kids have worked hard. The one thing that I can guarantee for this year is that we have uh, kids that will bust their tail uh, week in and week out. Um, they've done a great job this year, uh, this summer, uh, kind of embracing the two things that we want to work on uh, as a program, which is um, building relationships and being a good teammate. And uh, these two in particular, I'll let them introduce themselves in a second, but they've uh, done a great job of that all summer long. Alexander Afton, O-line D-line. Luke Summerhill, O-line D-line. We're coming off uh, five and four last year uh, with a different coaching staff. So that's one of the challenges that we'll have this year is uh, everything's brand new for these guys. Um, and uh, we look forward to uh, kind of embracing the challenge of a, of a tougher um, non-conference schedule this year. We open with Frazier uh, week one. So good luck to everybody. Uh, stay healthy this year. Troy Athens has a lot of experience coming back. Players I'm watching, as mentioned, um, were at the podium. Luke Summerhill, Alex Afrin up front. Um, they got some players I'm high on. Noah Vivian, Austin Pokley at wide receiver. Um, rushing attack and quarterback's a big question when I look at um, Troy Athens this year um, and also adjusting to, to a new system. And when you look at, when you don't have a quarterback, you know what I mean, then that's going to have some problems. The rushing attack, I'm high on a couple kids, um, especially high on, a, I'm high on a couple of them. Watch for a player named Anthony Asher. I'm high on him this year. Um, so talk, let's talk about, um, I got an interview with Coach, um, Tom Cook to talk about his new program and how things have been going at Troy Athens. I got the I got the coach of Red Hawks, new coach Tom Cook here. Coach, um, you were taking over a, new, a pro, uh, taking over a program that's had some success recently. Um, talk about um taking over for um taking over take talk about taking over the program. Um, you know, taking over for Coach Keenest. Uh, he went up to Holly and um, overall. Uh, you know they were successful last year, like offensively. Um, made made some mistakes that uh, like we want to fix. Um, and these guys have been working hard all summer to to you know try to fix them and, and uh, play mentally tough in, in big spots. How's your quarterback and running back situation? That is the big question around Troy Athens, of course. Having a new new program, new starting quarterback. You know how is that quarterback battle going? Um. Over the summer, it's been going well. Uh, we have two guys uh, really vying for the job. Uh, once you know the eighth uh, comes and, and we can get onto the practice field, um, we'll see you know who makes strides to, to kind of win out that spot. What are your expectations here, Coach? My expectations are just that our guys play hard. Um, we focus on two things: uh, you know, building relationships and being a good teammate. Uh, we I've found like in the past on staffs that I've been on, on teams that I've been on. Um, that the, the tighter knit teams like generally do better. 
And so like that's our focus right now. Um, we'll work on uh, you know the the technical part and um, uh, you know our our scheme like once we once we hit the practice field. But over the summer, it's been working hard and building relationships and, and learning how to be a good teammate. Thank you very much, Coach. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, guys. With the new system, you know, I learned this from Pistons, um, former general manager of the Detroit Pistons, Joe Dumars. There has to be a transition period, and it has to happen during the season. You know, and, it, and this is where I look at with Troy Athens. They're in a transition phase from Keenest to Cook, and it has to happen during the season. Now, we talked the schedule. The schedule, Cook said, is a little bit tougher. And it, it looks tough. I mean, like, when you look at the matchups here. Um, but they look winnable. I mean, I look at the game against Frazier. I mean, it's the first meeting between the Red Ox and the Ramblers. But that game looks winnable, even though Troy Athens has to go to Frazier. And it's going to be an interesting matchup. I, I think that, you know, I think the Red Hawks, if they have, I mean, if they can figure out the quarterback in running back situations, this is going, I think this is going, I think they'll be fine. Um, I think that week one match with Frazier, it's going to be really interesting. Um, week two, they host Berkeley. Um, they've lost the last two straight meetings, including last season. Lost 31-20 um, to 20 to the Bears um, at Hurley. Um, so, but this is another interesting matchup. Um, can Troy Athens match up up front with Berkeley? That's the big question I have with, Brett, with Troy Athens. <laughs> they have the horses, but and I think that matchup up front is going to be interesting. Um, it's going to come down to who runs their stop the most in that game. On um, week three, they take on Farmington. Of course, last season, that was a crazy game last season where um, Troy Athens beat Farmington on a winning two-point conversion in overtime, 36-35. It was absolutely crazy um, over there at um, Farmington. I mean, like, it was a big win for Keenis at the time. Um, but now with Troy Athens, the new staff, new program, um, Farmington a little bit more experienced. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in that match. And it's the first league game as well. Um, week number four, you go to you go visit the Maple Forest, um, going against a team that runs a veer like Seaholm does. Um, Seaholm has um, Troy Athens lost the last two meetings to the Maples. Um, this is going to be a really interesting matchup to say the least in that one. Um, Week number five, it's homecoming for Troy Athens. Interesting game at Royal Oak, of course. Last season, that was a crazy game where um, it was 43-35, it was a shootout. Um, this is going to be a really interesting game between the Ravens and the Red Hawks. It's Troy Athens homecoming. I know how energetic um, that's gonna be. Um, September 30th, they take on North Farmington, of course. Um, First meeting since 2016 um, when the um, Red Hawks beat the Raiders 21-6 to in 2016, but that's with a whole different regime. Um, week 7, they go to the new stadium at Pontiac. Um, they won 58-0 last year. Um, week 9, I, mean, I think Pontiac's going to be much improved, more improved this year. Um, week 8, it's the rivalry between Troy and Troy Athens. Of course, I remember that game. Really well last year, Troy Athens had a um, had a had a two score lead, um, blew that game, um, lost by one to um, Troy on their home field. Now they got ahead to Troy. That's going to be a real interesting matchup. I'm curious to see how Troy guards Darius White side in that matchup. And then October 21st, they close out the year with Utica Ford. It's the first meeting since 1976 where um, where the um, Falcons beat the Red Hawks 27 to 12. Um, when you go to a game at Troy Athens, um, they have one of the best, like um, if you go to their food court and all that, it is really good. Of course, they have the um, face of Troy Athens athletic director, Bob Dowd's um, face plant on there. Um, it's called the Bobby B Burger. Um, it is really good. You know what I mean? It is really good. Um, so if you go to a game at Troy Athens, I recommend you go to their food court, you know, go to their concession stand, one of the best concession stands in the state of Michigan. Um, with the team this year, I think there's going to be a transition period for Troy Athens going forward. Um, so I'm very curious to see how Coach Tom Cook handles that um, success over at, um, 
at Troy Athens this season. Um, let's go now from Troy Athens. Let's go to Farmington, of course. I had um, Coach Jason Albright at the um, podium uh, at, at, for a podcast this um, past um, couple weeks ago. So here's Coach Albright um, talking about the State of the Falcons um, this upcoming season. Uh, my name is Jason Albright. This is my second year as head coach at Farmington High School. Um, I'm going to have my guys introduce themselves and kind of continue on. Uh, my name is Dominic Pace. I'm a quarterback. Joshua Walker, linebacker. Gavin Miller, all line, D-line. Uh, these three seniors here, we had, I believe as juniors, we had 13 kids. We're up to 21 seniors now. Uh, so we did some work trying to get other athletes out from the building that weren't involved in football. Uh, one of the you know, prouder moments I've looked at now with our, our registration and final form stuff is our numbers have grown um, from every class, and that's something we've kind of strived to do. Uh, we had a great off-season wor uh, workout training session throughout the uh, winter and spring, and uh, this summer we really worked hard with our, our limited uh, to get into our weight room, but um, I'm really excited about what this this senior class and junior class we have, you know, playing together again for this year. Uh, we have we open up with Ypsilanti Lincoln, so it's a, a, a team we're not familiar with. So that's that's also exciting for us to meet that challenge, and uh, we're looking forward to a, a strong year. Thank you. When I talked to Farmington, when Coach Coach Albrecht on the podcast, I looked at obviously who he's got coming back. He got Dominic Pesci, three-year starting quarterback, very good offensive line coming back. Um, curious to see how the running game is going to look for Farmington um, this season. You know, we have, of course, um, he's been on the podcast, um, which is, um, I will have that link also if you want to look at it. It'll be on the blog as well at Saginaw 4650 at blogspot.com when the um, official football preview for the blog will be posted. Um, we will have that podcast as well. So I did catch up with Coach Albright to him. Um, Go more in depth with about the far, about the Farmington Falcons this upcoming season. Farmington coach Jason Albright here, of course, frequent podcast guest here. Um, coach, um, how has everything been this off season? It's been great. Uh, the winter time we had a really strong off season. Uh, the summer our, our building was closed, so we weren't able to use our weight room, but we we made the best of it using uh, dumbbells and medicine balls, sleds and tires and everything like that. So. Talk about um talk about your schedule. You open up with Ipsy Lincoln. That's not an easy matchup. Interesting matchup. Um, first meeting since 2019 between the two teams. Talk about that matchup with the rail splitters. Yeah, uh, you know they're a Division II team. I didn't want to really drop any lower than that. Um, and I knew they were very strong competition. Uh, we want to we want to gauge how good we are early on in the season. I thought that uh, that team has a, had a lot coming back. They're very similar to us. They have quarterback, running back, bunch of. Um, defensive backs and then a handful of linemen so I think it'll be a really great matchup. What is your expectation this year coach? I, you know I just want our kids to play as hard as they can and I want them to uh, give best effort and uh, play together and I think everything will work out in our favor. Thank you very much coach. Thank you. When you look at the Falcons this year of course obviously when you look at the schedule I mean like obviously starts off with Ypsilanti Lincoln of course the rail spillers at the first meeting since 2019 when um, Farmington went into Ypsilanti on the great turf and knocked off the rail splitters, 35-14. It was a really good win for um, Farmington at that time. I, I remember that team really well. Um, it was a really, really good team. I mean, like, I mean, like that team. You know, that I mean, they were uh, they were they were very similar, on the same path as the Road Tribal North Farmington, undefeated at that time. You know, when they knocked off Ypsilanti Lincoln, um, week two. They take on Royal Oak. This is an interesting matchup, of course. The, um, the um, Falcons have beaten the Ravens for the last five years, uh, for the last five times they played this season. So that's going to be really interesting to see how um, you know those two teams meet. Of course, both teams have got experience. Both teams are, you know, they're very. T they both teams have returning quarterbacks. I mean, we know Royal Oak's got Makai Jenkins. So I'm curious to see that battle up front in the trenches is going to be between those two teams. Week three is Troy Athens. I do remember that game real well. It was a really tough loss for, um, it was a really tough loss for um, Farmington last year on their home field, falling 36-35 to Troy Athens. Uh, very curious to see how Coach Tom Cook does with this team this year, bringing them, going up against Farmington. Um, 
it's gonna be really interesting here in that matchup there. And then at week four, you know, <laughs> Farmington TV 10 and Farmington, this is going to be an interesting game with North Farmington because North Farmington has won three straight against Farmington. The Farmington Cup has had permanent residents over at North Farmington. Could this be the year and North Farmington has to go down to Farmington this year? So that's going to be really interesting. Quarterback matchups interesting between Ryan Shelby and um, Dominic Pesci. It's going to be interesting. Um, I think when you look at the matchup, if it comes down to a battle of the trenches, which I think it could come down to, if it comes down to a coaching experience matchup, I would have to give the edge to North. But this is going to be interesting. It's at Farmington. It's at home for Coach Albright. You know, and I know how bad that they want to get that cut back. And, and they have a good chance to get the Farmington cut back. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, week five, they go to they take on Troy. Of course, last season, um, they've lost on their home field 17-7 at home last season. I remember the touchdown that Darius Whiteside caught in that game. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how that matchup goes. Um, week number five, week number six, they take on Pontiac. Of course, um, the Falcons have won five straight against the Phoenix. Um, this is going to be a different Pontiac team, though, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens. And of course, Farmington last year played at Pontiac. Of course, played at the new field, um, their new stadium. So that's going to be really interesting to see what happens in that matchup there. Week seven, it's Ferndale. Um, Ferndale. Um, I mean, like, Farmington beat Ferndale 28-6 last season, so that's going to be a really interesting matchup, to say the least there. I think it'll be two experienced teams going against one another. Um, week 8, it's Seaholm. Of course, um, Farmington is 1-3 in their last four games against Seaholm, so that's not good. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens in that matchup um, going forward there. And then week 9, they close out the year with Utica. I know we talked about the um, the matchup, how that match was organized between um, Utica and Farmington on the podcast. So it's going to be an interesting match. It's the first meeting between these two teams. Um, it's going to be interesting. So we'll see what happens there in that matchup. Um, again, on Farmington, we do have a podcast on. I'm talking about the Falcons. I had Coach Albright as a call-in guest for the pod. So. I will have that link posted up as well on the blog as well at second up before six fifty at blogspot.com. So that's going to be very interesting to see what happens with the state of the Falcons coming into this season. So far, there's a lot of expectations, a lot of excitement at Farmington this year. We'll see how this we'll see how they go do this year in this division. Um, let's go now from Farmington. Um, let's go to their arch rival, North Farmington. Um, when you look at the Raiders. Um, Last year, it was like a tale of two seasons. They had it up early, and then they lost six straight So to close out the year. So here's farm to coach John Herstein at the podium talking about the Raider Nation. All right, I'd like to uh, thank Rochester High and Coach Eric Vernon for hosting this event. It's always a class act. I want to thank the media for attending and our district, uh, our new district-wide AD, Tom Shelton, for making the trip out, out here to uh, Rochester to support both Farm Tonight and us. Um, a little bit about our team. Uh, last year, we graduated a big senior class. We've got some really good seniors moving up, however. Uh, guys have worked really hard throughout the offseason, had a good summer, and we're looking forward to this upcoming year. Uh, obviously, a strong competition. The OAA is something that we enjoy and uh, we're looking forward to it. How have our guys introduce themselves? Um, I'm Anderson Scalati. I play fullback and outside linebacker. I will drain from the line. Quinn Parpar, uh, wide receiver. Jaden Taylor, DB receiver. Thomas Belazovi, quarterback. Thank you and good luck, everybody. There's a lot of questions with North Farmington this year. Of course, um, Ryan Shelby, the starting quarterback this year, suffered an injury in November. Um, of course, um, I've watched North Farmington on 7-on-7. Seven seven. Um, they look good. I mean, they look pretty good. Depth's a big-time concern for North Farmington. Also, program strength is a big concern. I know when you look at Herstein, you look at, of course, the history with Farmington Harrison, with John Harrington there. 
the hawk effect I call it over there. Um, and there is a lot of similarities to Whitmore Farmington to Farm Tunnels Harrison. Of course, the majority of the staff that came over from Harrison is now at North Farmington. So when you look at the Raiders, you know, you kind of like, it kind of feels in your mind they're like Harrison. You know what I mean? So I caught up with Joe, Coach Herstein talking about the um, Raiders this upcoming season. I got the head coach of the Raiders, Coach John Herstein here, of course. Last season was a very rough year last year. Um, talk about the change, any changing guys that made this offseason. Uh, you know, obviously last year was disappointing. I thought we had a good team, uh, lost a lot of really close games, weren't able to finish. So that's kind of been our motto all offseason is finish. And uh, we've been working really hard at that and having the guys step up and, um, you know, uh, complete workouts, complete the drills, and, and really push himself to be strong in the fourth quarter. Talk about your schedule. you got Caledonia Week 2. Um, very interesting schedule. Um, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, I think it'll be a really good schedule as far as competition from a lot of different places. Obviously, Groves Week 1 is something we're excited about. We played them for a lot of years. Uh, and then we also have Bloomfield Hills Week 9, so we get to play two teams out of the white. And then we have Lake Orion also, so you get one team out of the red. Um, and then obviously crossing over down to... Uh, to Avondale, but I, I wouldn't exactly say down. They're, they're supposed to be pretty good, and they look good. They've worked really hard from what I've what I've heard from the coach and, and so on. Uh, and then when we bring in Caledonia for our, our final non-league game, uh, I, I think they're uh, you know one of the favorites on the west side of the state. We're supposed to have some really good talent, and uh, it'll, it'll make for an interesting season. We'll, guys will be tested. We'll find out what we're able to do and play some really good competition along the way. Talk about Ryan, of course. Ryan Shelby, your quarterback. Um, I know he he got hurt this past um, during seven on sevens. Um, how has he been doing? He's been coming along really good. Uh, he hurt his knee earlier this uh, past winter, but uh, I think he'll be back uh, hopefully by the start of the season. If not, uh, shortly there into it. He's worked really hard uh, to recover his body um, and, and to get the knee back into full mobility and, and to be able to come out and, and perform. He's taken reps with us during seven on sevens and. Uh, does a good job with that. In the meantime, Thomas Blazovic, uh, a senior that we have, he stepped in and he's done a great job too. So, you know, it might be a little competition when uh, when Ryan does return, but I'm sure he'll welcome it. What is the expectation this year, Coach? I mean, win. You know, go out there and perform our best. You know, it's tough to say wins and losses. Obviously, you just got to take them one at a time. Uh, but I think our guys can compete with all the teams on our schedule, so go out there and give it everything we got and finish, finish each game. You know, that'll be what we want to see. Guys, finish strong. Thank you really much, Coach. No Thank you. Yep. Yep. Players to watch to for this season, obviously, Ryan Shelby, quarterback. Um, we know what he did last season. Mill Coleman playing um, playing in the wide receiver in the defensive secondary. That's a big, um, important role as well. Um, Edison Scali at linebacker, um, Austin plays some running back. Um, Damian Eubanks is another one to watch. Um, Brendan Rice on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I am very concerned about their depth, as mentioned. So when you look at North Farmington, um, and you got Vinny Lee handling the, the um, putting duties for the um, Raiders. So when you look at the schedule this year, I talked to Herstein in depth about it. Um, open up with Groves on the road at um, in Beverly Hills. Um, it's going to be interesting because last season, North Farmington absolutely devoured Groves 49 to nothing. Um, now, a lot of that they didn't have, um, you know, North, I mean, Groves did not have one of their top players last season um, playing that game, but still, 49 nothing, that's an incredible stat line to say the least. And then week two, Caledonia, one of the top teams in the, OK, in the Ottawa Kent. Um, they were a regional finalist last season in Division two. They lost to Traverse City Central a year ago in the postseason. Of course, North Farmington was devoured by um, Traverse City Central last season in the final game of the regular season. So it's going to be interesting. Caledonia's got a lot of depth, the Fighting Scots. Um, it's the first meeting between the Raiders and the Fighting Scots. So that's going to be really interesting to see what happens in that matchup there. And then week three, can't believe this is the first meeting with Troy because um, you know, when you look at it here, of course, Troy, North Farns, they've been in the league for a little while now. Um, you know, but this is the first meeting between the Colts and the Raiders. So it's going to be an interesting matchup to see how um, the Colts handle the Raiders this season or and vice versa. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Week four, Farmington Cup, 
at Farmington. Um, Norris won the last three cups. Um, I think this year's meeting, I think it's gonna be a little bit closer this year. I'm curious to see how that match is gonna be. I know Farmington TV 10 is gonna have that game. Um, I know they're gonna have a lot of North Farmington and Farmington home games this season. So that's gonna be interesting. Of course, TV 10, I know they're gonna be really, really excited for that match up there. On September 23rd, it's Seaholm, of course, last season. I remember that game real well. Um, that was a heck of a game between Seaholm and North Farmington. Went back and forth, back and forth at the Maple Forest. Um, Seaholm won that game 41-34. Um, it was an incredible game, really good game um, over there at Birmingham last season. And that's gonna be a real interesting matchup there. Week number um, six, it's Troy Athens on the road. First meeting since 2016. Um, North lost that one 21-6 in 2016. But like I said, this is a new coaching staff over there. Um, different coaching, I mean, new coach staff at Troy Athens. North Farmington, we know they've changed coaching staffs, obviously with Herstein, the Hawk effect taking over there at North Farmington. Um, so it's a little different. Both these teams are a little bit different than in years past. Um, week seven, they take on Avondale on the road. Of course, last in 2019, um, North won 56 to 20 in 2019. So this is an interesting matchup between um, between Avondale. Both gonna be very athletic. North Farmington, we know they're well sound, disciplined. Um, so I'm curious to see how that matchup is gonna be. Um, week number eight, Lake Orion. Uh, last season, North Farmington won 44-22 over the Dragons last season. Um, Lake Orion, we know they got a new coaching staff. Um, and Coach Chris Bell taking out, coming back to take over the program. Um, so that's going to be a real interesting matchup between the Dragons and the, um, and the Raiders this year back at North Farmington. Uh, and then week nine, they close out the year with Bloomfield Hills. Um, it's the first meeting between the two teams. Um, of course, um, you know, so I'm curious to see how, and that matchup's gonna be interesting, especially between um, Ryan Shelby and um, CJ Jackson, a quarterback. That's the matchup to look forward to in that matchup between the um, Raiders and the Blackhawks. So when you look at the Raiders this year, um, they're, they, I mean, they're in a crossroads. I mean, like, you know, they can, you know, they got a tough schedule. They got a, um, they got, I mean, like there's some games that, and, but it's a winnable schedule. So when you look at North Farmington, you know, they're in a really interesting spot. I know a lot of people have picked them as a favorite in the blue, but I, I don't know, you know what I mean? You look at the Raiders this year, especially with depth purposes um, and talent purposes. They lost a lot of talent last year. So North Farmington, there's a lot of questions this year with them coming forward. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with the um, Raiders this upcoming season. Okay, now let's go from um, North Farmington. Let's talk Seaholm. Of course, when you look at the Maples this year, last season was really rough for the Coach Jim D. Wall and this team. I mean, one and eight was not an easy experience. You know, it was really, really rough. So here is Seaholm Coach Jim D. Wall at the podium. I'm Jim D. Wall. I'm the football coach here at Seaholm. Um, this is the 11th year for entering. Um, we're excited for this year, just like everyone else. Came off a season that was not so great last year, one and eight. Um, I think our off season, like many of you guys, has been really, really good. The weight room. I uh, was very pleased with our our summer stuff, summer lifting camps. We don't need seven on seven. We're trying to eliminate the floor pass in football. Um, but uh, we had a we had a really good summer. Um, coach Coach Lyon, Coach Matu, talk about love. I, I truly believe our kids love each other. They love the coaches. It's, it's an honor to coach see them. We're after every day, every practice, you get kids that come over and give it up just because that's what, you know, they, they, they care about each other. It's going to be a really good one year. We can't wait to get going. So I'll introduce, uh, I'll let these guys introduce themselves. Uh, I'm Colton Kenny, I play quarterback. Uh, Kyle Robin, safety slot. Brennan Barrett, I play Ola Vila. Like everyone else, we wish you guys nothing but the best this year. Stay healthy and enjoy two days. When you look at Seaholm this year, I mean, Colton Kinney, I'm really high on this year. I mean, last year I saw greatness of, of him. Um, he's going to be, he's their starting quarterback for Seaholm this year. Kyle Robbins, 
back at slot wide receiver. Um, got Sean Emerson I'm high on, Jack Lewis I'm high on, Jack Holgrave I'm high on, Graydon Kinney. I mean, when you look at the Veer, of course, obviously, you know, you got to have some very good running back, run, running, rushing attack. Um, that's what Elam has with Graydon Kinney and Brock Hardwig. Um, and then, of course, the line, you know, when you look at Seaholm, the line looks to be really good, led, of course, by Ben Rosenfield, Dylan Boosie, Brennan Barrett, John Jokic, and um, Zach McKenna coming back. And then defensively, when you look at Seaholm, obviously, you got Jack Hargrave, um, Kyle Robbins in the secondary, uh, Jack Hargrave at linebacker, Kyle Robbins in the secondary. Um, you got their defensive line looks solid. And then you have also Sean Emerson, Kaz Murray, and um, will, all, will be also in the secondary as well with Kyle Robbins as well. So when you look at Seaholm as a team this year, I expect them to be better this year. When you look at the Maples this upcoming season, there's a lot of expectation for Seaholm, especially with the struggles they had last year and coming from the white a year ago. So when you look at the schedule this year, it is very interesting. I mean, they open up the year with Bloomfield Hills. Um, when I look at this matchup here, I mean, these two schools are really close to one another. All you gotta do is just take, um, all you gotta do is just take um, Lost the Road all the way up to um, Long Lake Road. And it's really not that far between Seaholm and Bloomfield Hills. I mean, the last time these two teams met was in 2017, um, where um, where um, Bloomfield Hills um, beat Seaholm 21-19 in 2017. It was a heck of a game there. Um, week two, this is going to be interesting. Heading, taking on the Cubs of Detroit University, Detroit Jesuits. Um, the last time these two teams played was in 2013, where the Maples lost 20-17 to the Cubs back in 2013. So that's going to be really interesting there. I am very curious to see how this one's going to be. It's at, it's in the Maple Forest. So it's going to be, that's going to be a really interesting matchup to say the least there. Um, week three, it's Avondale. Um, this is the first meeting since 2019. And I remember that last game of the year where, of course, both teams are trying to fight in the playoffs in, Ab in Auburn Hills. Seaholm won 63-31 back in 2019, of course. That ended up starting a postseason run where Seaholm went to the um, Division II state semifinals when they went and won that won that game over the um, Yellow Jackets because that got that got them into the postseason and that's what started the magic over at Seaholm um, was when they knocked off Avondale. Um, week four they take on Troy Athens. Um, this is a um, rematch of a 2019 game that was won by Seaholm. 50 to 22. Um, so that's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. It's at home, so that'll be very interesting, especially Athens having a new coaching staff there. Um, week number five, this is going to be interesting. Sion traveling to Holland Field to take on the Raiders of North Farmington. Um, last season, we know that crazy game went back and forth where um, Seaholm won that game from come behind fashion, knocked off the Raiders. Um, it was a heck of a win for Seaholm and Coach Jim Dewall at the time. Um, one of their bright spots of last season was knocking off North Farmington on their homecoming. Um, September 30th, they, they, go to, they take on Troy. Um, I mean, like, his first meeting since 2019. Um, Seaholm won over Troy 44 nothing back in 2019. Of course, that was when Troy had their uh, really, really struggled to score until late in the year. Um, week seven, this is interesting. I mean, they head to Hurley to take on Berkeley. It's the first meet since 2018, where um, where the um, where the where the Maples won that one, 42-13. Um, so that's going to be really interesting in that matchup there. Um, week eight, they take on Farmington. I remember the 2020 game really well when that was a head scratch for me when Seaholm blew out Farmington, 41 to two. And that was, I know that stunned my co-host Ian Locke um, as well when that score was read out, 41 to two, I still couldn't believe that. Um, and then week nine, the rivalry game between Seaholm and Groves. Um, Groves has had Seaholm's number the last 10 games, they're two and eight. I mean, Seaholm is um, two and eight against Groves in the last 10 games. Um, so when you look at this one here, it's gonna be interesting. Um, 
Seaholm's got a lot of experience coming back, a lot of excitement coming back. You know that veer is going to be really hard to stop. Um, a lot of excitement over um, with Seaholm. The only concern I have with them is depth's a big issue for them. Program strength's a big issue for them. Um, we'll see what happens, but I think when you look at Seaholm this year, if they can address program strength and depth, this is going to be a very good football team. Um, I think they're going to be good this year, but we'll see what happens um, heading into the future. So a lot of experience coming back for Seaholm. I mean, like you got, you have the weapons, you have the playmakers. So a lot of expectations, a lot of excitement for Seaholm coming up heading into this season. And then our final team we're going to talk about this week here on the pod. I mean, this week here on the previous show is the Troy Colts. When you look at Troy last year, they won eight straight to start the year. Eight no. Heading into that game against Boompy Hills, they lost a tough one. And then last season, made the playoffs, was on Valley Sports Detroit. They took on Chippewa Valley in the first round, and look what happened. So when you look at Troy this year, there's a lot to replace with the Colts. So here is Troy coach Chris Frazier at the podium talking about the Colts. All right, so I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Thanks, Rochester Poston. I'm going to let my boys introduce themselves, some of our program leaders. Max Hayden, O-line, D-line. Noel Block, running back. There's Wysa, DB, privacy. Raymond Zaregu, linebacker. All right, so just like everyone else, obviously we're excited about the season, but I want to take my 30 seconds here and not only thank my guys, but thank every one of you that's out here. Because without you and all the effort that you guys put in, us old guys wouldn't be able to do what we like to do. You know, we ask a lot of you. I know your summer pretty much is taking up football, so thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you do for us. Good luck this year to everyone. Stay healthy. Good luck. When you look at Troy this year, the strength of them is in the secondary. And it starts with Darius Whiteside. Whiteside, we know he's very athletic. He is very gifted, not only in his defensive secondary, but also at wide receiver as well. Um, Nolan Block coming back at running back, that's going to be very interesting to see. Of course, um, I'm very curious to see how he does this year. Um, also, he's going to likely play some time at linebacker as well. Um, Max Hayden up front, um, he's going to be a key player for them this year. Um, Another guy I'm high on to watch for in the, in the defensive secondary is Jaden Peacock. Of course, I've seen him play in basketball. He is very gifted, very athletic as well. Um, Nick Fran Franz is another one to watch as well. I'm very curious to see how he does this year. Um, and then, of course, Ray Maraku at linebacker. Um, I think he's going to be the key. And then, of course, you have um, Zach Pinoza, of course, if you know him from boys basketball season. Of course, he plays, uh, he plays for Coach Gary Frelick. Um, really, really good athlete, also a really good kicker as well, handling the kicking duties. Um, when you look at Troy overall, 12-6 and six the last two years, 2-16 and 16 prior to that. So I talked to Coach Chris Frazier to, to try to get more information on Troy, especially try, having to place the quarterback, especially because they lost their quarterback last year. They lost a lot up front as well. I got the head coach of the Colts, Coach Chris Frazier here. Coach, um, last season you guys had a successful year, um, but you had a tough loss to Chippewa Valley last year. Talk about recap last year a little bit and heading and, the, and heading into this season. Well, we had a great senior class last year. They led us to obviously uh, eight and zero start, and then you know we played uh, Bloomfield in week nine, and they uh, they kind of took it to us. And then uh, we hosted a playoff game, which is a cool experience on you know cable TV. So. That, that experience last year, all those wins, the wins at Berkeley, the wins at Athens, it was just uh, one of those seasons to remember. And then obviously in the playoffs, Chippewa, they were better than us and they, you know, we got beat. So uh, I got nothing to, nothing bad to say about last season. It was a great year and good good memories. How about your quarterback situation? Of course, you were looking for a new starter this year. Who's your starter this year? So obviously we don't have a starter yet. This, uh, we got some kids, young kids competing for it. Um, you know. As, as a high school coach, every two years, three years, you got to replace a quarterback, so that's kind of tough. But uh, someone will take the job, someone will take the first snaps, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. And your expectations, what are your expectations as your coach? Well, we just want to compete every game, just like we did the last couple uh, years. And, you know, last year we kept competing to the end, and it showed, and we, we won some games in the fourth quarter, and hopefully that mentality crosses over to uh, this year. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
when looking at the Colts this year, when you look at Troy, one thing you got to look at with them is, okay, how is Troy going to look with the strength of schedule? Of course, that is a little bit of a concern for me when I look at their strength of schedule. Of course, now they do start, their first three games are going to be on the road. They had the Macomb Lance Cruz North to take on the Crusaders. Um, last, I mean, Lance Cruz North last year had some struggles. They really struggled in the MAC Red. I mean, now they went down a division. I think they're in the MAC White this year. Um, this is their first ever meeting with Troy. Six and ten the last two years. Um, last year, Macomb Lance Cruz North played Rochester, um, and Rochester ended up winning that game against them. So I'm curious to see how. This matchup is going to be, I know the Crusaders have a lot more experience this year, so I'm curious to see, and we know Troy's going to be, they're going to be young, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there in that matchup there. Um, week two, they will head down to Detroit to take on Detroit Mumford. Um, first meeting, um, six and ten the last two years, so curious to see how that matchup is between the Mustangs and the Colts. Um, this is, it'll be a very interesting matchup um, in that one. And then week three, they head to Holland Field to take on the Raiders. It's the first meeting between these two teams. Of course, um, North Farming, both these teams have been in the league a while, but this is actually the first meeting between these two teams. And that's going to be an interesting matchup, especially to say the least, how, you know, how Coach John Herstein prepares to defend against Darius Whiteside and Jaden Peacock. Um, I expect Peacock to also see some time at wide receiver as well this year. Um, and especially in that game where, you know, North Farming, although both teams are not deep teams, but it'll be, I'm curious to see how this matchup is going to be. Um, then they come home. Um, week four matchup with Ferndale, of course, um, Troy won 35 to 12 last season over the Eagles. Um, Ferndale's a much different team this year. I think they're going to be different. Um, with the experience they got coming back. It's gonna be an interesting matchup between um, Ferndale and Troy this season. Um, week five against Farmington. I remember the Darius Whiteside touchdown catch last year against the Falcons. Um, and it's gonna be interesting, especially at home. Um, curious to see how this is gonna be um, with that matchup. I think that, um, you know, when you look at the matchup, I'm just concerned about the quarterback situation at Troy. Um, I know Farmington's got a lot of experience coming back. So it could be a very tough go in that one for Troy against Farmington. Week six, they head to the Maple Forest to take on Seaholm. In 2019, this is the last time these two teams played. Um, that's when um, Seaholm um, beat Troy 44 um, nothing. That's when Troy was really, really down until late in the year. We started picking things up offensively. Um, so that's going to be a very interesting matchup with, with Troy going up against Seaholm. Um, week number um, seven, they had the Royal Oak. I mean, I know um, Troy's won the last two meet last two meetings against um, Royal Oak. Of course, um, I am very curious to see because Royal Oak's got a lot more experience. You got Makai Jenkins, but I know Troy's got Darius Whiteside. I uh, they also got Nolan Block as well running. Um, the line is a big question mark for Troy. Um, Royal Oaks loaded up front, so I'm curious to see how that matchup goes. Um, and then, um, and then you look at um, Week Eight. Um, this is a very interesting one. Always play, when Troy plays Troy Athens. I know Troy came back from a two touchdown deficit last year to stun Athens on their home field. Um, this year's game at Troy. Um, so this is going to be very interesting to see what happens here. I know in fall last year, Troy beat Athens in um, football, volleyball. Um, I mean, like, I, I can't remember the others, but they've had Troy, they've had Troy Athens number despite the fact that, that Troy is um, three and six against Troy Athens in the last nine years. Troy Athens is a new coaching staff. That's going to, I'm very curious to see how that's going to go in that matchup there. And then... Week nine, they close out the year at home with Frazier. It's the first meeting. Um, Fra the Ramblers are 10 and seven the last two years. Um, Frazier this year plays both Troy and Troy Athens <coughs> on the schedule this year. They open up with Athens week one, and then they close out the year with Troy week nine. So, so Troy, so Frazier and um, 
Avondale are doing something very similar, of course. Avondale, respectively, they're going to Warren for the week one and week nine games. And then with Frazier, they're going to both Troy and Troy Athens. They're taking on both Troy and Troy Athens for their week not win one and nine games, respectively. So when you look at the blue division this year, this is virtually a pick em division. Um, I have right now, early on, I know people ask me about, um, you know, when you look at the schedule here, um, Troy Athens, to me, if things go right, this should be a good team because the schedule looks favorable. Everything looks manageable for them. I think they can win seven games. And I've said this before, they ha if they can find a quarterback in a running game, there's no doubt in my reason, I think this team can win seven games. Um, see home, I have them second right now, tied for actually sharing the league title with Athens. Um, see home, when I look at them, they got they got a lot of experience back. They got they got Kenny at quarterback. You got another Kenny at running back. Really high on both Kenny boys. Good line coming back. Very curious to see how this team does um, coming into the year. Um, and then you got and then you got um. And then you got, um, wow, I think I got Farmington messed up there on that. Um, um, but I got Farmington right now at four and five. I got them at three and one in the league. Um, I think that they're gonna do, they're gonna do some damage this year. I'm really, really high on um, Farmington. I think they can do, they can do some damage this year. They, the schedule's tough, so we'll see what happens there. Um, and then there's, and then there's North Farmington, North Farmington. I can't trust that not conference. I mean, not conference is brutal. I mean, really, really difficult. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Troy, I have them winning six games as well. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I know I got to see that league schedule, of course. I will have the um, I will have the um, projections, official projections on my blog as well at second I'm at 4650 at blogspot.com. So now we introduce the top ten for the first time. This, this week, of course, the um, week one. Um, here is the official top 10 to start the year. Um, of course, um, this will change, you know, during the white and the red preview shows. So my top team is West Bloomfield. When you look at the Lakers, they're loaded. Adams, I have them two. Clarkson, three. A&T, four. Lake Orion, I have them five. Harperwood, six. Berkeley, seven. Loopy Hills, eight. Stony Creek, nine. Oxford, 10. Um, when you look at when you look at the blue division, it is virtually a pick 'em, and that's where I think anybody in the blue division can win that division. You know, and that's probably why when you look at the top ten to start the year, there's not a lot of blue teams that are ranked in there. No blue teams are ranked right now, but they're right now because I think that blue division right now looks really, really tight right now. Um, really even, Steven. You know, anybody can win that division, whether it's Troy Athens, Seaholm, Farmington, North Farmington. Um, I mean, in Troy, I, any of those teams, anybody can win the blue division. I mean, that division is absolutely brutal. It is absolutely difficult. So we'll see what happens going into the season. So a lot to look forward to looking at the season. So we'll see what happens. Um, Heading into the year. I wish everybody the best of luck in the blue division this season. Um, next week we're going to have the white. And then two weeks we're going to have the red. The gold will already be up by now. Um, so we'll see what happens. Of course the previews from the blog spot will be released this upcoming weekend. So we'll see what happens going forward um, with the um, with the Troy, with the with everybody in the blue division. So I wish everybody the best of luck. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care. God bless. And see you next week, everybody.